Ahoy hoy, and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, and today we are going to talk about a decision I have made for the works I have on the SCP Wiki, uh, some of my reasoning behind it, and we're going to dabble a little bit in something that happened over the weekend, but I'm probably not going to uh, do a deep dive on it until this Thursday because I uh, promised some folk that I would hold off until a little bit, until some other shoes had dropped. We'll put it that way. This weekend, there was a thing uh, with the Bright List. You've probably seen it on Twitter. It got deleted off the wiki and then it got reposted. There's a whole thing that's going to be... I'm going to do a whole video on this on Thursday. But there's some things that may develop between here and then uh, that I'd like to wait for. If you need to know why any of these things might have happened, there's a video I did last year outlining exactly... The problems with Dr. Bright. Uh, you can find that in a link in the description, uh, but that's the reason why we're discussing this in the first place. It's also the reason why the Bright list was briefly deleted over the weekend, but again, we'll talk about that on Thursday. However, this has prompted a bit of a discussion about the validity of leaving Brightworks up on the SCP Wiki, and I was thinking about this this morning, um, and as I was going through the Articles I have on the SCP Wiki that include the character Dr. Bright. I was starting to think about the effects that reading those articles might have on someone who was a legitimate victim of Dr. Bright, the author. And it gets complicated, right? Because on the one hand, you'd, it, you'd hope that people can separate the author from the character, but Expecting that out of everyone is also unreasonable, I would say, especially people who are victimized. Sometimes it's not about logic or uh, dispassionate observation. Sometimes it's about the idea that this person hurt you and the name alone could cause you pain. And then I thought about the fact that that means that a not insignificant number of my own articles actually are likely, or at least possibly, causing pain to someone unnecessarily. And so I was starting to examine um, the articles that I had up on the wiki with Bright in them. And I, look, I looked this up a long time ago to find out how many articles there were, and there's over 200. I think there might be close to 250. or It's, it's between 200 and 300. And about... Was it 11 or 12 of those? Maybe no more than that, actually. But close to 11. I remember like at least 11 or 12 of those were written by me. In fact, out of all of the authors on the wiki who aren't Dr. Bright, the author, I've written more articles containing that character than literally anyone else. And so I have my own sort of, I, I guess the... Apologies, this is a little informal. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of formulating this as I'm talking. This is me personally talking to you, the audience here. I have a bit of a responsibility to examine how necessary is it to retain the name Dr. Bright in the articles I've written. Because maybe I want to keep the tales, right? Like the tale, maybe the tale doesn't need Dr. Bright's name in order for it to function as a story. You just need a wacky doctor who does wacky things sometimes, right? That could be Dr. Kondraki. That could be Dr. Clef. That could be Dr. Sumerian in a couple of cases. And I looked through my articles, and unfortunately, there was a, a, a large number of them that are going to, if I'm going to remove Dr. Bright from them, will require me to rewrite them to some degree. Or some sort of acceptance on the site that there is, you know, some new character, Dr. Simmons, who has exactly the same elements in place as Dr. Bright does. Uh, which would probably be the simplest solution, but it's hard to get that many people on board with that, uh, an idea of that sort of, uh, that extreme, let's put it that way. The best example I can give is the article I have with Dr. Bright getting a Nintendo Wii. It's a, it's, very, it's supposed to be funny. He gets into a gunfight with Dr. Clef to get the last Nintendo Wii, but the reason he's getting it is because he has switched bodies and he needs to get a hold of, uh, well, he doesn't need to, but he wants to get a hold of a Nintendo Wii to acclimate his motor functions to the new, to his brain and motor functions to the new body. And that's not, easily transferable to a random other character because 
everyone understands who Dr. Bright is already. And so I didn't have in that article or in that tale, I should say, I didn't have to explain why that mattered. Or at least I didn't have to go into as much detail as to why that mattered. Dr. Bright switches bodies with the necklace, and so he would naturally have problems with his motor function, so on. That was the development of it. I can't easily change it, but he could change it. I'm going to wait and see what the overall... What's the best way to put this? The overall consensus is on this topic. But I've already changed two stories. One of which is my most popular tale, and it's possible that it will be less popular after this. I believe is that Dr. Bright is no longer allowed to use temporal anomalies in order to travel back in time to kill Hitler. I've changed it to Dr. Sumerian is no longer, because Dr. Sumerian's a character in that story. Changed it to Dr. Sumerian is no longer allow, allowed to use temporal anomalies to go back in time to kill Hitler. And I word searched Bright's name and switched it out with Kondraki. Because Clef is another character in the story already, so he wouldn't be usable as a substitution. And that's it. It's easy. There was two or three stories I did that to this morning. And depending on the, how the consensus comes down on this topic, or if people stop talking about it uh, entirely and no consensus comes down on this topic, I will probably begin to rewrite, or at least alter in some way, the articles I continue to have on the wiki that include the name Dr. Bright. And while I don't expect anyone else to do the same, I think for me it's the right thing to do. Anyway, that's it. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Sinjariki, who is pledged at $100. It is nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I will see you all again on Thursday, I promise.